Okay. So the recording has started. Janessa, you can hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, the recording has started, right? Yes, sir. So we were talking about, we were talking about the different types of failures, right? You're talking about the different types of failures. Yes. Hold on. Okay. 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 Hello. 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 Mm, fine. You should connect my earphones. So last class we have seen. about stress concentration. Last class we have seen about stress concentration and we've seen what is dynamic loading, right? In today's class, in today's class, we'll start with fatigue failures. I hope the things that we have already done are clear. You can definitely ask me any doubt you have. Take it. Towards the end of the class, we'll have a doubt session and uh, you can ask me whatever doubts you have. Okay. So, so today we'll start with fatigue failure. Today we'll start with fatigue failure. So it has been observed. It has been observed that materials fail under fluctuating stresses. We have seen what is fluctuating stresses last class, right? We've seen what is fluctuating stresses last class. So the material fails under fluctuating stresses at a stress magnitude which is much lower than the ultimate tensile strength. So you've already seen that a, the tile material is designed for the yield strength, right? And a brittle material is designed for the ultimate tensile strength, right? So we are talking about one that is the ultimate, ultimate tensile strength right now. So if the load is fluctuating in nature, if the load is fluctuating in the nature, the stresses produced will be fluctuating in nature. So it will result in failure of the material much earlier than the ultimate tensile strength of the material. So this was a concern to the scientists, right? Why are the material failing much earlier? The design stress, the design strength is say somewhere around 300 megapascal. This is the design strength, right? But the materials were failing much earlier. The materials were failing much earlier might be somewhere around one third. The materials were failing somewhere around one third. That is somewhere around 100 megapascal. The scientists were very much confused why it is happening. Okay. So they did some research and that then this theory of fatigue failure come into picture. Right. So we are going to study what exactly is fatigue failure. So in which kind of parts fatigue failures are common? The parts which are subjected to fluctuating stresses, the parts which are subjected to fluctuating stresses like transmission shaft, connecting rods, gears, vehicle suspension, springs, ball bearings, all these components of machine elements are subjected to fatigue failure, right? Because they're subjected to fluctuating stress. So let us try to understand what exactly is a fatigue failure. How does the fatigue failure takes place, right? Now tell me, do you remember stress concentration? Do you remember stress concentration? Yes or no? Yes, stress concentration, right? You remember what is stress concentration, right? So whenever, wherever there is stress concentration, okay, so all the materials will have some kind of stress concentration. It might result because of improper machining, because of impurities inside the uh, material, because of abrupt changes in cross section. There are so many things we have already discussed. Now, let us consider any material. Okay? Let us consider any material. Okay? Let us consider any material. Let us see what, how does this stress concern, how does this static failure takes place? 
सपोज लेट मी टेक ए मेटेरियल लेट मी कंसीडर ए मेटेरियल राइट सो इट इज सब्जेक्टेड टू व्हाट काइंड ऑफ लोड इट इज सब्जेक्टेड टू फ्लक्चुएटिंग लोड ठीक है इट इज सब्जेक्टेड टू फ्लक्चुएटिंग लोड और यू कैन सिंपली से लेट मी से डायनेमिक लोड लेट मी से इट इज सब्जेक्टेड टू डायनेमिक लोड सो डायनेमिक लोड इन लेट मी से प्लस माइनस सिग्मा प्लस माइनस सिग्मा राइट सो बेसिकली व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज basically what is happening is basically what is happening is the stresses are changing from plus sigma to minus sigma then minus sigma to plus sigma plus sigma to minus sigma okay so if you want to draw a graph quickly you can draw a graph and see you can quickly draw and graph and see so this is the nature of stress this is the nature of stress so what kind of stress is this i hope you remember what kind of stress is this what kind of stress is this if it is moving from plus sigma to minus sigma do you remember what kind of stress is this you are moving from plus sigma to minus sigma it is called reverse stresses it is called reverse stresses right it is called reverse stresses it is called reverse stress now now let us assume okay let us assume we have lot thing lot of things to cover okay to thoda speed will be more okay because we have very limited time now left so speed will be little bit higher okay okay so let us assume that there is some amount of stress concentration here there is some amount of stress concentration here okay there will be stress concentration every everywhere let me say there is some amount of stress concentration here now when the stresses fluctuate when the stresses fluctuate what is going to happen here there will be a crack initiation here a small crack will form at this area a small crack will form at this area you are not able to see my see the presentation now from the beginning you are not being able to see Yes, I mean. Try to reconnect once. Praveen, can you see the screen? Praveen, are you there? Can you see the screen? Others can see the screen. Others can see the screen. So it might be some connection problem with Naveen. So he can rejoin, and I think it will be clear to him, right? So Praveen, have you revised the earlier classes? Machine design. okay so so today we are continuing theek hai we are continuing uh, second chapter that is design of design against fluctuating stresses right design against fluctuating stresses anyways theek hai you get to understand so what exactly happens here what exactly happens here when the stresses are going from positive to negative positive to negative i can i have very limited liability here means i don't have 
the privilege to keep on keep on discussing the things we have to cut it short okay so that our requirement is met within 2 hours otherwise this lecture could have been much better could have been much because a lot of things to learn these are something very new to most of the people right so but we have to do it as per our requirement for hl course that is what we are going to do okay so because of this force what will happen a crack will get initiated what will happen a crack will get initiated and because of these stresses because it is plus tens plus to minus it is changing from plus to minus plus to mi minus so what is happening when it is plus it is tension so this crack is being pulled crack is being pulled when it is plus sigma when it is plus sigma it is the material is under tension so the crack is being pulled when it is minus sigma the material is under compression the crack is being pushed so what will happen to this crack can you can you tell me praveen what will happen to this crack if this goes on if this goes on the crack is being pulled and again the next moment the crack is being pushed again the crack is being pulled the crack is being pulled and then the crack is being pushed yes very nice fantastic so the crack will propagate the crack is going to propagate right so what will happen the crack will become bigger and bigger bigger and bigger bigger and bigger and ultimately there will be a failure at this section and ultimately there will be a failure at this section this is exactly why this is exactly why under fluctuating stresses this is exactly why under fluctuating stresses the materials fails at much much lower strength it fails at a strength of almost one third right so the crack propagates under fluctuating load and then there is a sudden and total failure of the machine component okay so what on what factors this static failure depends the static failure depends on number of cycles mean stress stress amplitude we have seen what is mean stress and stress amplitude in the last section stress concentration residual stress and corrosion and free and corrosion and free right okay so let us not talk about something which is called endurance limit let us not talk about something which is called endurance limit the fatigue or endurance limit is defined at a maximum amplitude of completely reverse stress defined as the maximum amplitude of completely reverse stress that a standard specimen can sustain for a unlimited number of cycles 10 to the power 6 we consider 10 to the power 6 as the unlimited number of cycles okay we consider 10 to the power 6 cycles as unlimited number of cycles so if any machine component has undergone 10 to the power 6 cycle then we are satisfied as economic point of view as design point of view the material has done its job it has sustained 10 to the power 6 cycles right the material has done its job okay so if you're talking about reverse stress okay if you're talking about completely reverse stress let us go back to see what exactly is completely reverse stress this is the kind of completely reverse stress we are talking about this is the type of completely reverse stress we are talking about right what happens in completely reverse stress what happens in completely reverse stress you can see right the material is going from plus 10 you can say the material is going from plus 10 to minus 10 then plus 10 to minus 10 right so this is what is a complete stress looks like this is what is a sorry completely reverse stress looks like right so if it is if the material is going on the this this is something that has been defined as such okay this is something that has been defined as such Naveen, is the screen visible now? Uh, sir, you please let in people if anyone join. I have done now, but uh, no issues. Please continue. Sorry, sir. Sorry. You have to let in people inside that. You have to. Uh, but I didn't get any notification actually. Sorry. You didn't get any notification. No problem. I have taken care. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. So thank you.
okay i'll keep the group open uh मेटेरियल इज अंडर स्टेटिक लोडिंग whenever the material is under static loading we have seen it in last class how it is being designed what what are the what are the po what points we what is the design point design point we have seen that for for ductile materials ductile materials for ductile materials what we consider is we consider yield strength for ductile material we consider yield strength for brittle material what we consider we consider ultimate strength sut right now for for any kind of material be it ductile material or be it brittle material if you are considering if you are considering what you are considering if you are considering dynamic loading this was for static loading this was for static loading but for dynamic loading what we are going to use is endurance limit so dynamic loading what does it mean by dynamic loading dynamic loading means the material is under either fluctuating or alternating stress reverse completely reverse stress right we have seen it we have seen the different types of dynamic loading right repeated stress reverse stress and fluctuating stress so if the material is if the machine component is under this three loading this kind of loading it is known as dynamic loading and what exactly we are going to do is we will design it using the endurance right so what question can be asked in your exam the definition of the endurance limit is a very very common definition of endurance limit is very very common right so what exactly is the definition it is the maximum amplitude of completely reverse stress the standard specimen can sustain for a unlimited number of cycles if i say unlimited number of cycles actually the meaning is 10 to the power 6 cycles actually the meaning is 10 to the power 6 cycles without any fatigue failure without any fatigue failure so there are two things that you three things in fact you have to consider here first is the maximum amplitude right completely reversed stress and what else 10 to the power 6 cycles 10 to the power 6 cycles right without fatigue failure so the maximum amplitude that the element can sustain right of completely reverse stress for at least 10 to the power 6 cycles let us go back let us go back dekhte hain i hope that you remember what is amplitude but let me let us see let us see what is the amplitude here what is the amplitude here this is the amplitude right you have seen this is the amplitude how we represent the amplitude we represent it using sa or sigma a can call it sa or you can call it sigma a we can call it sa or you can call it sigma a right so this definition can definitely be asked this definition can definitely be asked
Now, what is fatigue life of the component? If I talk about fatigue life, what exactly is fatigue life of the component? Is the number of stress cycles that the standard specimen can completely complete during the test before appearance of the first fatigue phase. Okay, so these two are two different terminologies. These two are two different terminologies. Endurance limit is something else. This is the this is the design reference point for dynamic loading. This is a design reference point for dynamic loading. You're going to see how you're going to plot this in endurance limit, how exactly you're going to find out. You have to draw an SN diagram to find out endurance limit. And then also we are going to see how this endurance limit is being used. Okay? Just by going through the definition, you might not understand completely because it is something very new, but we will see. Okay? Now, what is fatigue life? Fatigue life. Now, there is a test which is known as rotating beam machine. What kind of test it is? It, there is a test which is known as rotating beam machine machine so in rotating beam machine a standard specimen a standard specimen similar to that of the uh, universal testing machine specimen this kind of specimen will be there it's not exact diagram okay so this kind of specimen will be there so standard specimen is put under a rotating beam machine where load will be applied and this specimen will keep on rotating the specimen will keep on rotating the specimen will keep on rotating right and there will be load so it is a fatigue load right it is a what kind of load it is a dynamic load being applied onto the specimen right so what is the number of stress cycle what is the number of stress cycle the standard specimen can complete before first fatigue crack will be called the fatigue life of that material will be called the fatigue life of that material right so taking it okay we will try to understand okay we'll try to understand even more so let us see what exactly is a s n curve let us see what is a s n curve so using the s n curve we actually predict what we predict we predict the endurance limit okay we predict the endurance limit so we'll see what is an SN curve in detail. Next plot, we are going to plot an SN curve. We'll learn how to plot an SN curve. So what is SN curve? SN curve is a graphical representation of stress amplitude. You can call it SF. You can call it stress amplitude. You can simply call it sigma A. You can call it sigma A. Some of the people there represent SF. Stress amplitude versus number of stress cycles. So basically, along the y-axis, what we represent is log of log of stress amplitude. We can say sigma a. And on the y-axis, what we represent is log of n. What is n? The number of cycles. It will be in 10 to the power 6. For example, if n is equal to, say, n is equal to 1,000. 1000 means 10 to the power 3. So what will be with what will come up in the x-axis? Only 3. Because log of 10 to the power 3 to the base 10 will become is equal to 3. Right? Log of 10 to the power 3 to the base 10 will become how much? 3. So basically along the x-axis we are writing 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, what are this? This is basically 10 to the power 3, 10 to the power 4, 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 6. So we have seen, we have seen endurance limit is corresponding to 10 to the power 6 cycle. Okay. So endurance limit is corresponding to 10 to the power 6 cycle. Right. Now, now all of you please try to pay attention here. All of you please try to pay attention here. What is there on the y axis? That is log of stress amplitude to the base 10 right so if you plot the curve if you plot the curve okay if you plot the curve the curve sn curve will learn how to plot the sn curve in next slide it will be something like this it will come out something like this right so if you are above the curve if your design whatever you are designing design points is above the curve if your points design points are above the curve so the material will fail. If your design points are above the curve, the material will fail. Right. So what kind of question can be asked? What kind of question can be asked? 
let us go on to the next plot take a next diagram that is steps to plot ksn diagram you will have a better understanding here you will have a better understanding here right so how to plot the sn diagram how to plot the sn diagram right now before plotting the sn diagram for plotting the sn diagram let me tell you let me tell you a simple thing okay we are not you we are not for plotting the sn diagram okay let me see something okay now if phatic failure okay where in the x axis in the x axis we are what you are plotting we are plotting log of log of n to the base 10 now n can be 1000 if n is 1000 the point will be 1 n can be n can be 2000 or you can say 10000 10 to the power 3 sorry not like this okay n can be 10 if n is equal to 10 the x axis will have 1 if n is equal to 100 x axis will have the point 2 if n is equal to 1000 the x axis will have point 3 now if the material is failing below point 3 means if the material is failing in 10 cycles or 100 cycles or 990 cycles right we are yes there might be some materials that are failing in this 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 load category but we are not considering them in our design Okay, we are not considering them in our designing, right? If fatigue failure occurs, if the number of cycles is less than 1000, it is called low cycle fatigue, right? Where it can happen, generally screws, nuts, bolts, right? Short lived devices such as missiles, okay? all this might have this kind of fatigue failure. Means the failure is below the, below the, below 1000 cycles right cycles are you being able to understand what exactly i'm talking about cycles what exactly do i mean by cycle this is one cycle this is one cycle this is one stress cycle right then you'll have another stress cycle right then you'll have another stress cycle this is one cycle right this is what we are talking about cycle so one cycle it starts it goes to the peak then it goes to the bottom peak then it ends at zero so this is one cycle so how many cycles can the material sustain yes the material can fail even at 10 cycles or 100 cycles or 1000 cycles right possible right these are all short-lived devices so designers are not considered they are not very bothered about this kind of failures what they do they simply ignore ignore all the failures below 10,000, they're not considering it as designed under fatigue load. So simply what will they do? They will simply increase the factor of safety, right? They increase the factor of safety and this portion will be taken care of, right? So people, the designers are more concerned about the failures above 1,000 cycles. Failure is happening, say, somewhere around 10,000 cycles. It might be happening somewhere around 1 lakh cycles, right? So it goes on, goes on. Okay. Those are the points where the designers are concerned about. Okay. So if the num if the failure is happening when the number of cycles is more than one thousand, then it is called high cycle fatigue, right? It is components subjected to high cycle fatigue are designed using endurance limit and SN curve. Okay, we have spoken about endurance limit. We'll see what is endurance limit even more. We'll have more clarity. What is SN curve? We are going to plot an SN curve. Then there are Soderberg lines, Gerber lines, Goodman diagram, or modified Goodman diagram. Okay. So this these points are used to design a component which is under fatigue loading. And the number of cycles, if the failure is happening above. 1000 cycles so what are the design points for what are the design criteria for under for a machine element subject under fatigue loading you will have you might be using endurance limit 
and the N SN curve. Only endurance limit will not do. Endurance limit and SN curve collectively, simultaneously, you will see. Then there is Soderberg line, Gerber line, Goodman line. We are going to see all these points. So in today's class, what exactly we are going to see is we will see how to use endurance limit and SN curve to design a fatigue load in machine element under fatigue load. How to when to use Soderberg, Gerber, and Goodman lines, and what are the different what are the different possible questions? How can the questions be framed, and how can the question be framed and what kind of questions can be asked? Okay, so let us see how to plot. You will get a little bit of more clarity after learning how to plot the SN diagram and then we will see what is the endurance limit. Okay, what is the endurance limit? Now, now how is this endurance limit being found out? We are going to see. We are going to see. Aage hum dekhenge. Okay, now aage we are going to see. How is this endurance limit being found out? Okay. Endurance limit is found out using experimental method and then we use some theoretical methods also. Right? Combination of experimental and theoretical method. Basically, we are going to see. So, endurance limit is found out using the rotating beam machine. I will not go much detail into the rotating beam machine, but we will see a little bit okay, about rotating beam machine. Now, let us assume that we know what is the endurance limit. Let us let us assume for some time that we know what is the endurance limit of the material. Let us assume for some time that we know what is the endurance limit of the material. How we are going to find out the endurance limit? We are going to see in our some of the slides, coming slides. Okay. Let us for now, time being, let us say the endurance limit. We know what is the endurance limit. Let me say it is somewhere around 100 or say 200 megapascal. 200 megapascal. Okay, so now, now how we are going to plot the SN curve? Okay, question has been asked once in engineering service examination, right? How to plot out plot the SN curve or simple simple things can be asked from the SN curve. Okay, because this is important, right? With respect to design, this is very important, right? So on the x-axis you will have log of n to the base ten. On the y-axis you will have log of s to the base ten. What is s? What is this s? S is stress amplitude what is s s is stress amplitude okay now now we are starting from three now you should know why we are starting from three because we are ignoring all the fatigue failures which is occurring below 10,000, right? We are not concerned. We can extend the SN curve for points 1, 2, 3, but we are not interested in those points because those points, those failures are taken care of by providing high factor of safety. So if high factor of safety is provided, so we are now least bothered about this. Now we are bothered about all the fatigue failures that is happening after 10,000 cycles, right? 10 to the power 3, 10 to the power 4, 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 6, so on. Okay. Now, at point 3, what we are going to do is we are going to plot, we are going to take the, we are going to take the ultimate strength of the material. We'll multiply it by 0 0.9 and then we will take log to the base 10. First point. So this is basically log to the base 10. Okay, this is basically log, not log 10 s. This is log. You read it like this because the word does not support all different uh these for the presentation. Microsoft PowerPoint does not support was not supporting uh the subscript and superscript, so it became something like this. So log of s to the base 10, right? So in place of s, what we are going to put is what we are going to put is log of 10 to the base, log of log of 0 0.9 SUT to the base 10, comma 3. So this is our first point. This is our first point, right? So what is the second point? Second point is on the y-axis, we are going to take log of SE to the base 10. What is SE? SE is nothing else but endurance limit. So as I 
assume that I know the endurance limit. Okay? It means a 200 megapascal or whatever it might be. Okay? Endurance limit. Okay. So endurance limit, we have seen in the definition of endurance limit. Have you seen it in the definition of endurance limit? So endurance limit is the failure at 10 to the power 6 cycles, right? For endurance limit, what is the value of n? n is equal to 10 to the power 6 cycles, right? For endurance limit, n is equal to 10 to the power 6 cycles. So what we are going to have here is corresponding to this point, we are going to have 6. So we'll plot this point. Two points again. We have plotted point A and we have plotted point B. Let me say, and you'll simply join these two points. You'll simply join these two points, A and B. You'll join these two points, A and B, and thereafter, and thereafter, it is a flat curve. Thereafter, it is a flat curve. A curve which is, which is parallel to x axis. So I hope step one, two, three, four are clear. First, we are going to plot log s to the base 10 on y axis and log n to the base 10 on the x axis then we'll plot the points log of 0 0.9 sut to the base 10 and comma 3 and log of 10 log of se log of endurance limit to the base 10 comma 6 on the uh, graph right we'll join these two points right and after after this point, after point B, you're simply going to draw a straight line parallel to the straight line parallel to the x axis, right? So now, so is the things clear? Are you being able to understand? I know this is we are studying this for first time. Okay, have you studied this earlier? Have you studied this earlier? So it might seem that in that case, understanding should be easy for you, right? In that case, the understanding should be easy for you. Okay, very nice, fantastic, 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 right? So now, now suppose there is a material, machine element, let me consider a machine element, which is subjected to completely reverse stress, okay, which is, subjected to completely reverse stress having a stress amplitude of having a stress amplitude of sf it could be anything it could be 100 200 300 whatever okay we have plotted this graph we have plotted this graph for a particular material for which material it could be anything for different material this graph will be ha having different points the slope of this line will be different right for different materials for different components the slope of this line will be different right so i have a material i have a material i have a machine component what i have done i have plotted this sn curve now i want to find out when will this material fail now what is my my consideration when will this material fail let me say this material this machine component is subjected to a reverse stress reverse stress which stress amplitude is sf let me say array for sake but let us let us go back let us go back to this reverse stress this is reverse stress right this is reverse stress so let me say that material is subjected to this reverse stress which has a stress amplitude that is sigma a is equal to sf this is the maximum amplitude maximum stress right this is let me say the max is subjected to a maximum stress of this much so in that case how you are going to predict how many cycles how many cycles will the will the how many cycles will the material sustain before a fatigue failure okay before a fatigue failure okay you can go it that way also okay we can go it that way also so you plot this point 
log of sf to the base 10 then go in this direction you will get this point in the graph then you turn down turn down and this is the point will reach on the log of n to the base 1 okay let me say that is 4.5 let me say you get n is equal to 4.5 so log of n to the base 10 is equal to 4.5 so what is the value of n n is equal to 10 to the power 4.5 so the component if it is subjected to sf stress amplitude it will undergo it will it can withstand a maximum number of cycles of 10 to the power 4.5. This is how you are going to calculate. Okay. This is how you are going to calculate. So, vice versa also you can do. If you know the like, if you want this component to sustain certain amount of cycles, you can find out what is the maximum, what is the maximum stress amplitude that the material or the missing component can be subject. Is it clear? Shall we move on? I want the answer from all of you. We don't have the privilege of time. That is the problem, right? We don't have the privilege of time. Otherwise, we could have given at least two classes are easily given to this topic, right? Okay. Now, let us see what exactly is not sensitivity. Okay. Notes, not sensitivity. Okay, before going into not sensitivity, let us see how exactly we are determining the endurance value. Last slide, I have just said to you that let us assume what is the endurance limit. Now, let us see how exactly the endurance limit, how exactly the endurance limit is calculated, right? Now, firstly, the endurance limit is first time determined the endurance limit is first time determined using the rotating beam machine using the rotating beam machine right so we have a rotating beam machine the component is loaded into the rotating beam machine right we have a component let me say simply drawing the component this kind of component will be there it will be loaded to the rotating beam machine so the rotating beam machine will apply some load at the same time it will also Keep on rotating the member it, at the same time it will also keep on rotating the member right from this will it will be subjected to different load cycles and from this we will experimentally find out the endurance limit of the rotating beam specimen right let us assume that it is SC dress let us assume that this is SC dress now if you see the rotating beam component, if you see the rotating beam component, it has been designed, it has been designed and machined, right, to fit the rotating beam machine. And the test is also carried out. The test is carried out in certain environmental conditions. It is done in lab, na? Where will be the rotating beam, beam experiment be done? It will be done in lab right the specimens will also be the specimen right the rotating beam specimen which you're going to load into the machine right they will also be specifically machined right is a surface dimension the surface will be will have certain kind of surface panels the overall size of the machine uh, component will be same right there is some lab conditions right so the lab will have less amount of dust, not much uh, equipments, right? The uh, handling will be done by experienced personals. So, lot many conditions are there, right? So, the endurance limit that is obtained from the rotating beam 
specimen is not very accurate. Why? Because when you, when you manufacture the component, actual component, right, that component will have different size and say than that of the rotating beam specimen. Rotating beam specimen has a standard size. The rotating beam specimen has a standard size, right? But if you go to if you go to the actual element, it will have it will have different shape, different size, right? It will be manufactured under different conditions. The workers might be skilled, it might not be skilled, right? All the components will be kept together. There will be stresses on the surface uh, because of uh, different machining processes and so many other things. How is the handling of the material being done? How the handling of the components are being done, right? So the stress concentration will be different, right? Stress concentration on the rotating beam specimen and the actual element, okay? Actual element, for example, if you, if you and you of a gear or let me say a connecting rod or say transmission shaft. So all different elements will have different stress concentrations, right? So in that case, in that case, we cannot use the, we cannot directly use the results obtained from the lab, right? So we have to do some amount of modifications, right? We have to do some amount of modifications. So that's why what we do, we multiply, we multiply by four terms, what are these four terms? K A, K B, K C, K D, along with the endurance limit that is obtained from the lab. S E S is the endurance limit obtained from the lab, right? We multiply with four terms K A, K B, K C, K D, right? So that we get S E. What is the S E? S E is the endurance limit of the particular mechanical component subjected to reverse bending stress. S E is the endurance limit of the particular mechanical component. Okay, so let us see what exactly K, A, K, B, K, C, K, D are. K is surface tennis factor, K, B is the size factor, K, C is the reliability factor and K, D is the modifying factor to account for stress concentration. Right, so we can understand here that surface thinness of the rotating beam specimen and the actual mechanical component will not be same. Right, because they have been manufactured at two different establishments, two different manufacturing facilities. Definitely, the surface using different manufacturing processes. Right, so definitely the surface finish will not be same. So we have to multiply by surface finish factor. Size factor, definitely the size of the machine component will not be same as the rotating beam component. So size factor is there. Right, reliability factor, the workmanship of the people the skillness of the people, right? So all these things will also come into account while considering the fatigue failure. So we have the reliability factor, right? And then we have, and then we have the modifying factor to account for stress concentration. Then we have the modifying factor to account for the stress concentration. Right, because this is this point clear to all of you? Am, am I audible? Come back to that slide again. Can you see the question, all of you? Is the question visible to all of you? Give me the answer. Give me the answer of the equation.
just hold on Okay. If you increase the size, so this is kind of a logical, logical question, right? Whatever you are seeing, it is completely pertaining to this. Okay, it is completely pertaining to this. Okay, so if you see the size factor. If you see the size factor, can you tell me? If you see the size factor, if you see the size factor, can you tell me? If the size increases, if this size increases, what will happen to the endurance limit? What will happen to the size factor? Can you tell me? increase right what will happen d and kb not directly talk about here definitely i can say this when the when the size size increases i'll not talk about kb now how are how, how are these increase how are these determined these are all determined experimentally okay experimentally you have your design data book you have the design data book so in the design data book all these points are mentioned okay all different tables what is the what are the different values of ka kb kc kd right for different conditions will be mentioned right so definitely if the size increases there will be change in the size factor that is why definite there is a size factor if the, there is a change in size definitely there will be change in size factor okay okay Will there be change in KD? Tell me. Will there be change in KD also? Yes or no? How to know? Dekhte hai. Dekhte hai. Let us see. Let us see. So if you see, if you see this question, okay, if you see this question, okay. If the size of the specimen increases, if the size of the specimen increases, can I say the surface area will increase? Can I say the surface area will increase? Yes or no? Tell me. If I say the size of the specimen increases, can I say the surface area will increase? If the surface area increases, can I say surface? Surface defects will increase. More surface area means more surface defects. Right? Similarly, if the size of the specimen increases, can I say that? Can I say that the total volume will increase? Volume will increase. If I say the volume increases, can I say the number of discontinuities, number of impurities? Or if I want to be direct, stress concentration will also increase to certain limit. There is high possibility that stress concentration also increases. There is high possibility that the stress concentration also increases. So surface defects are increasing, stress concentration are increasing. So what do you comment about the endurance limit? So the endurance limit be more. Will it, will it be able to sustain more number of cycles or the number of cycles before failure will come down? Or you can say, will it be able to sustain more amount of stress or less amount of stress? If the stress concentrations are increasing, surface defects are increasing, yes, decreases, right? So this is the kind of 
logical answers most of the questions that you will get you will be logical or direct direct questions most of the questions that you will get will be logical or direct most of the questions that you will receive will be logical or direct They didn't get properly. Okay, I'll tell you again. If the size of the standard specimen increases, if the size of the standard specimen increases, then surface area will increase. Right? Not the surface area. Volume also will increase. So if surface area increases, there will be more surface defects. Right? More surface defects. Surface defects will increase. If volume increases because of more volume, means more material. And more volume means more material. If there is more material, definitely a smaller material will have. If a smaller material means if it has one to stress concentration points, if you double the size, definitely what will happen? The stress concentration points will be will increase. More materials mean more impurity, more impurities mean more stress concentration. Isn't it? Isn't it? Right? So I can say the total stress concentration will also increase. If you see the total amount of stress concentration, total amount of impurities possible. And that will be there will also increase so if the impurities are increasing when stress concentration number of stress concentration points are increasing surface defects are increasing so what will happen to the endurance limit the material will fail earlier or you can say the material will fail at a less amount of stress right so i can say that the endurance limit decreases but i can say i can say that the endurance limit decreases is it clear now Okay, fantastic. Now, let us see how exactly we are going to design. Let us see how exactly we are going to design a component. How exactly you are going to design a component for finite and infinite life. Right? So, what do we mean by infinite life? If I am saying infinite life, it means that number of cycles should be greater than 10 to the power 6. Number of cycles is greater than or equal to 10 to the power 6 or we might not want it suppose we're designing a component we don't want 10 to the power 6 10 to the power 6 is too much 10 to the power 6 cycle is too much you might feel like that, right so if you want to design it for finite life say let me say 10 to the power 4 or any number of cycles any number of cycles 4000 cycles 5000 cycles 50000 cycles whatever it might be right so you want to design it for finite life or infinite life let us see Okay, so this whatever you're talking about, we're going to talk about is the reverse stresses. Okay, we're we going to talk about the reverse stresses. So reverse stresses are easy, yeah. Okay, because endurance limit is defined on the basis of reverse stress. Okay, so that's why designing with respect to reverse stress is easy, right? So let us let us let us try to have an overview, right? Let us try to have an overview. So the components, any component, any machine component, they might be subjected to completely reverse stress or fluctuating stress. Fluctuating stress means I'm talking about the other two. For fluctuating stress, I'm talking about other two repeated stress and alternating stress. If I'm saying fluctuating stress, fluctuating or alternating, or alternating is in there, fluctuating or alternating. fluctuating or alternating stress and, repeat, and repeated stress and repeated stress and repeated stress okay so one is this reverse stress and the other is this one fluctuating alternating or repeated stress right so what i am saying here is the components can be subjected to completely reverse stress or it can be subjected to fluctuating stress or it can be subjected to fluctuating stress right 
Now, first, let us see design for completely reverse stress. So, if the material, if the machine component is subjected to complete reverse stress, again, it can be divided into design for infinite life or design for finite life. Design for finite life and design for infinite life. Design for finite life and infinite life. So, if I am saying infinite life means greater than or equal to 10 to the power 6 cycles. If I am saying finite life means smaller than, smaller than 10 to the power 6 cycles. So, how to design it? How to design it? Okay. How to design it? We'll try to see some questions also. We'll try to see some questions. How to design it? So, if you're designing for infinite life, we'll directly use endurance limit. We'll directly use endurance limit. will directly use endurance limit. If you're designing it for finite life, you're going to use the SN curve. Thoda's idea to already you have seen it. Thoda's we have already seen it, how you are going to use it, how you're going to use the SN curve. So if you're suppose designing for finite life, So if you're designing for finite life, so if you're designing for finite life, how exactly you're going to design? If you're designing for finite life, how exactly you're going to design? We have seen already, right? Suppose you have to design it for this much of life. Let me say n is equal to 10 to the power 4.5. So definitely 10 to the power 4.5 is less than 10 to the power 6. So we'll mark this point against this point. We now know how to draw the SN curve. We'll go to the curve. Then we will go to the x-axis. So we'll get a point here, right? So what will be that point? The point will be log of SF to the base 10, right? From here, we can find out, from here, we can find out what is the maximum value of, what is the maximum value of stress amplitude, right? What is the stress amplitude What is the stress amplitude? the material can be subjected to material or better to say the machine component can be subjected Okay, so is it clear how you are going to design it for finite life? Is it clear how you are going to design it for finite life? Good. Good. So let us try to attempt this question. Let us try to attempt this question.
I am not audible now. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Praveen, can you hear me now? Naveen, Naveen. Okay, Praveen. Okay, fine. Now, now I am audible. Okay, good. So, a machine component made up of ductile material is subjected to a variable loading. Sigma mean is given. Sigma max is given. Right. If the corrected endurance limit. If the corrected endurance limit and the yield strength of the material are, then the factor of safety is. So you can see this is a completely reverse stress, right? It is going from minus 50 to plus 50. If it is going from minus 50 to plus 50, it means it is a complete reverse stress, right? You are already given the corrected endurance limit. So, what is the meaning of corrected endurance limit? Let us go back once. So, this is the corrected endurance limit, SE. S is the corrected, means this is the endurance limit that we have got from the rotating beam specimen. Is it the correct endurance limit of the machine component? No. So, after that, we have used the surface finish factor, size factor, reliability factor, and modifying factor to account for stress concentration. And after multiplying all these four quantities, what we have is the corrected endurance limit. So, in question, you don't have to find this. You are already given the corrected endurance limit. So, what you have given is the corrected endurance limit. Okay. So let me tell you one more thing here. Let me tell you one more thing. If it is not given, because sometimes it is possible that the corrected endurance limit is not given, then we have some standard for formula. For steels, it is 0.5 SUT. For cast iron and cast steel, it is 0.5 SUT. What is SUT? SUT care, what is SUT? Ultimate strength. It is half D, endurance limit is half D. Which one I'm talking about? I'm talking about SE. Which one I'm talking about? I'm talking about SE. Suppose the SE dash, sorry, SE dash, right? SE dash. So that is for wrought aluminium, it is 0.4 SUT. For cast aluminium, it is 0.3. So generally, just remember this one 0.5 SUT. Okay. If you remember this, that will be enough, right? It will be enough if you remember that for steel, okay? Because most of the questions that will be given will be for steel, okay? That will be enough. So, you might be able to use this. Can you calculate the stress amplitude? Can you calculate this stress amplitude? Can you calculate this stress amplitude? What will be the stress amplitude? Sigma A. You have seen this in last class. It is sigma minimum or so sigma maximum minus sigma minimum divided by 2. So, in this case, it is 50 minus minus of 50 divided by 2. That is equal to 50 megapascal. So, nothing else will be given. 
नथिंग एल्स इज गिवन ठीक है एंड्यूरेंस लिमिट इज गिवन मीन्स वी आर डिजाइनिंग इट फॉर इनफाइनेट लाइफ ठीक है इफ एंड्यूरेंस लिमिट इज गिवन वी आर डिजाइनिंग इट फॉर इनफाइनेट लाइफ So if you want to see the stress curve, the stress curve will be something like this. Stress curve will be something like this, right? With the maximum stress that is being subjected, you see this is plus fifty, minus fifty, plus fifty. This is a very easy question actually. Minus fifty. This can be asked in. Uh, because the level of question paper will be one third the level of eight, so this can be asked actually. So this is sigma a, right? So sigma a you have received to be fifty mega pascal. So now, so you are subjecting the. It is again, again. See if you go to the basics, you know the basics, then you will be able to answer it very easily. Okay, let us go to the definition of. endurance limit let us go to the definition of endurance limit if you see the definition of endurance limit if you go to the definition of endurance limit you'll be able to see that you'll be able to see that i have asked you to i have asked you to I'll come back to you, Naveen. Note down three points: maximum amplitude, right? Maximum amplitude. What is maximum amplitude? That is nothing else but sigma e. Completely reverse stress means this kind of stress. And ten to the power six cycle, and ten to the power six cycle, right? So if you see this question, if you see this question, the question we are doing, it is definitely completely reverse stress, right? It is definitely completely reverse stress. Right. So, what is the maximum amplitude? Maximum amplitude is six fifty mega pascal. Right. So, we can actually design this component on the basis of endurance limit because this is exactly satisfying the conditions that has been established for endurance limit. right so what i can say the applied load is 50 mega pascal the endurance limit is 100 mega pascal what is the applied load applied load is 50 mega pascal what is the endurance limit maximum load that can be applied maximum stress amplitude that can be applied that is the endurance limit is 100 mega pascal so what is the factor of safety factor of safety i can say this is nothing else but sigma a divided by sigma Yes. Right. That is equal to fifteen. Sorry, ulta kar diya. Factor of safety ulta hoga, right? Factor of safety is equal to sigma e s or s. A formula. I write down the formula so that you are not confused. Okay. I write down the formula for you so that you are not confused. Factor of safety will always be greater than one. Okay, factor of safety will always be greater than. One. Okay, let me see the formula. So, what is the stress applied? Maximum stress should be is equal to endurance limit divided by endurance limit divided by factor of safety. So in this case, you can see factor of safety is equal to what is the endurance limit? It is hundred divided by maximum stress is fifty. So factor of safety is two. Okay, is it clear, Naveen? What did you want to say with respect to minus fifty? I hope it is clear now. Right. So, what designing we have done here? We have designed the component for infinite life. Okay, we have designed the component for infinite life. Right. So, infinite life directly we can use the endurance limit. Okay, 
let us do one more question now now my main point is not to not exactly to solve this question okay this question i'll not solve it because this will not be asked okay it will require calculator without calculator you will not be able to solve it my only point is to show you how to solve it here my point is only to show you how to solve it if you really want to solve it interested to solve it you can solve it at home but we will not do much of the numerical portion why why because it is not related it is not directly you will not be asked this kind of question right but then why if you are not being asked this kind of question then why i am solving this for you you might be asked part of it it is very important to understand how to use the endurance limit right only when you have the clarity then you will be under you will be able to answer small questions small theoretical or questions that might be asked from this point okay so you already know i have already two times explained you i have already two times explained you how to solve using the sn curve so this is this question you have to use because it is alternating stress for reverse stress for reverse stress we will directly use the we will directly use the endurance limit but if it is alternating stress or repeated stress in that case what we have to do in that case what you have to do is we have to use the sn curve try to offer you navin has try to give try to give the answer we'll see we'll see i hope all of you are trying if you try it then definitely you will at least enjoy you will enjoy how to do it you you will get to learn how to do it so your basics will be clear so this is bit calculative problem un undoubtedly so directly this kind of questions will not be asked but part of it can be asked okay for example once the engineering service they have asked how to how to plot the sn curve how to plot the sn curve so this kind of questions you will be able to answer if you basic certainly Okay, 
let us try to see let us try to see how exactly you are going to draw the SN curve okay all of you please pay attention Navin your answer is right correct right very nice have you done it before this kind of questions you've done this kind of questions before very nice fantastic so on the y-axis we know that we are going to plot what exactly log 10 to the base stress amplitude right we're going to plot stress amplitude let me say s and on the x-axis log to the base 10 okay we can start from 3 let me say this is point 3 4 5 6 okay so here you can see two points that have been given are thousand cycles 490 megapascal thousand cycles means 10 to the power 3 so log 10 to the power 3 to the base 10 is equal to 3 so this is the point 490 so you will find out one point which is equal to log of 490 to the base 10 so you have point a what is point a point a is the y coordinate is log 490 to the base 10 and x coordinate is 3 right then you will find another point that is corrected endurance limit is 770 mega pascal so 70 mega pascal y axis i can write log of se what is se now se is 70 to the base 10 right and what will be the x axis 10 to the power 6 cycles endurance limit means 10 to the power 6 cycles so log of 10 to the power 6 to the base 10 will become 6 so this is what we will obtain this is the point that you are going to obtain right this is, let me say this is point right now what we are going to do is join these two points now what you are going to do is join these two points right so we have the sn curve after point b it is parallel after point b no problem it is parallel so this is how we are going to plot the sn curve okay sn curve agya. we have the sn curve now what exactly we are required to find out we are required to find out now the material is subject to it to a alternating stress of 100 mega pascal right so 100 mega pascal so we will try to find out log of 100 to the base 2 we'll plot this point log of 100 to the base 2 sorry to the base 10 log of 100 to the base 10 so that is equal to 2 we'll go to the using a scale you can say okay, using a scale we'll go to the line ab then we'll find out the x code find out the x code so this x coordinate will be nothing else but d this x coordinate will nothing will be nothing else but b log of the answer so by solving this you can get the answer the correct answer is c the correct answer is c so how to solve it you can also find out the equation graphically also you can do it but graphically it might not be very very convenient okay you might not get very accurate result graphically so what you can do you can find out the equation of the straight line av you can find out the equation of straight line av so once you find out the equation of straight line av if you plot the y coordinate you'll automatically get the x coordinate right if you plot the let me say point c if you can plot the y coordinate you'll automatically get the x coordinate if you have the equation of line a b so that is how exact you will get the exact answer that is how you will get the exact answer Praveen want to know how you, you have plotted point b again i'll tell you see point b what is point b okay point b is the correct endurance limit is already given that is 70 mega pascal right endurance limit is already given that is 70 mega pascal so we know about endurance limit okay? what is the point b this is going to be the point b right this is going to be the point b after saying this 
This is point B. What is this point? Definitely the x coordinate will be 6. Why? This, this is endurance limit. Right? Endurance limit means 10 to the power 6 cycles. So the x coordinate is fixed 10 to the power 6. This value is given as 70. So this point is log of 70 to the base 10. Right? So what is this? Point B is nothing else but log of y coordinate is log of 70 to the base 10 comma x coordinate is 6. Okay. Good. You're very intelligent, all of you. You've been able to learn very fast. Thank you. You're making my task easier. Okay. You're making my task easier. Okay. So what we have seen is How to use the SN curve? Okay, how to use the SN curve? We have seen that how to use the SN curve. Now, apart from SN curve, if the material is subjected to, if the material is subjected to any other loading, any other type of loading, if the material is subjected to any other type of loading, then we have to use the Soderberg, Goodman, and Gerber line. To use the Soderberg, Goodman, and Gerber line. So how exactly we are finding these lines? It for us to see. Okay, let us see. Okay, let us see. Problem. What we are going to have is Soderberg, Goodman and the Gerber line, right? So we'll see how exactly to use this. Okay, we'll see how exactly to use this. Okay, now, we'll talk about the equations. Okay, in the coming slide, we'll definitely talk about the equations. Okay, what are the different equations? Okay. So you can use any one of them. Okay, you can use any one of them, okay? But we'll see how, how to use it. First, let us try to plot them. Okay. First, let us try to plot them. First, let us try to plot them. Okay. In the x-axis, what we are going to have is mean stress. I hope you remember this. I hope you remember this. In the x-axis, what you are going to have is the mean stress. Right? In the in the y-axis, what you are going to have is the stress amplitude. In the y-axis, you are going to have the stress amplitude. And in the x-axis, you are going to have the mean stress. mean stress on the x-axis and stress amplitude on the y-axis. Okay. Then you'll plot four points. What are the four points? On the x-axis, or sorry, on the y-axis, you're going to plot SYT, SE. What is SYT, by the way? Can you tell me what is SYT? Check, check. What is SYT? Yield strength, right? That is the yield strength in tension. That is the yield strength in tension. Yes, very nice, good. So it is what is SE? Check, check. What is SE? Endurance limit. Very nice. Endurance limit, right? So similarly, S Y T is the yield strength, and what is S U T? Check, check. What is S U T? ultimate tensile strength very nice ultimate tensile strength so these are the points you have to plot okay so this scientist they did some research this scientist they did some research and they tried to predict the failure of different materials under different circumstances very nice very nice okay now there are three lines that i'll draw here Okay, please see there are three lines that will that I will draw here. The first line is joining the ultimate strength and SYT. This line is known as Soderberg line. That line is known as Soderberg line. Then there is a line joining SE, that is the endurance limit and SUT.
that is known as the goodman line that is the good known as goodman line then you have one line which is a curve a parabolic curve joining se and set so this line is known as the gerber line this line is known as the gerber line so there might be question there might be question like you are given of the lines in a picture then you might be asked what kind of which line does this represent okay so we'll try to form the equations also let us let us at this same time try to form the equations let us try to form the equations for all these lines okay the same time i'll try to find draw the equations of all these lines okay if i'm talking about gerber or let me say let me start with soderberg If I'm talking about Soderberg line, so this is sigma mean, sigma mean divided by S Y T plus sigma amplitude is a stress amplitude divided by endurance limit. Is equal to one divided by factor of safety. Similarly, I think now you should be able to write the Goodman line on yourself. What will be the Goodman line? What is the equation of Goodman line? What is the equation of Goodman line? Sigma mean divided by so sigma mean is along x axis divided by the point divided by the po point of intersection that is S U T plus sigma amplitude divided by S E so it is constant for all sigma amplitude will always be divided by S E. 1 by factor of safety. Then you will have the Gerber line. And then you'll have the Gerber line. So, what is the Gerber line? What does the Gerber line? It is a parabolic equation. It is a parabolic equation. Uh, but you need not remember this line you know, because it will never be asked. So let us let us not load ourselves and give you the line. But let us let us not try to because again a parabolic these two lines are good enough to solve all the equations. These two lines are good enough to solve all these all the equations. Okay. Even if you get any numerical equations. Okay. So time is limited. Let us not go into let us not go into all different different lines. Right. So so here, my dear friends, here, my dear friends, you can see. So what does this line predict? If the failure points, if the combinations, see, whenever you are subjecting, let us go back to our type of stresses. Let us go back to type of stresses. So whenever if it is a reverse stress, all of us not now know we are going to use endurance limit. So it, if it is a reverse stress, all of us now know we are going to use endurance limit. All of us know we are going to use endurance limit, right? But if it is But if it is fluctuating stress or repeated stress, what we are going to use, we will use either of the three lines. Okay, Soderberg, Goodman, or the Gerber. Okay, these are three different scientists who predicted the failures at different times 
by their own resource they publish the resource and these are the most there are even more there are even more uh, um, theories of failures right for dynamic stress but these are the most commonly used okay so that is why these are being studied okay so whenever the materials are subjected to alternating or repeated less uh, stresses you can see there are two components one is the stress amplitude and one is the mean stress all will have mean stress and stress amplitude right there will be some amount of mean stress and stress amplitude so here the mean stress was zero for repeated reverse stress the reverse stress the mean stress was equal to zero right for reverse stress where you are using endurance limit the mean stress was equal to zero right but if you use any other right the mean stress is not equal to zero right even if you see repeated stress or even if you see the fluctuating stress the mean stress are not zero so these two are the parameters that you will have to calculate we have seen in previous class how to calculate the mean stress right so if you come back to that formula we have seen if you have come back to the formula we have seen right if you make the mean stress zero so this whole term will become zero if you make the mean stress equal to zero the whole term will become zero so what is left out sigma a by se is equal to one upon f of s sigma a divided by endurance limit that is the sigma a is a stress amplitude divided by endurance limit is equal to one divided by factor of safety this is nothing else but the equation what we have used yehi equation hai na sigma a divided by sigma e that is s of e is equal to one upon f of s right this is the same equation we have used here why you are using this equation because here this sigma m component that is the mean stress is equal to zero but if mean stress is not zero but if the mean stress is not zero right then you have to use either of this lines then you have to use either of this lines right so if you put the values in these lines and you will get the answer okay hum dekhenge we will try to solve two questions at least we will try to solve two questions okay okay now now we have seen that we have seen that a material the material which is under fluctuating stress or repeated stress it is subjected to two components of stresses one is the mean stress and one is the stress amplitude so if the combination of mean stress and stress amplitude okay i have plotted the mean stress along x axis i have plotted the mean stress along x axis and the stress amplitude along y axis mean stress along x axis stress amplitude along y axis if the com if the combination of these two stresses lie within the line for example if i am talking about soderberg if i am talking about soderberg if the combination of sigma m and sigma a lies within the line for example say the combination of sigma m and sigma a are a point hoga na this point will have some coordinates y coordinate e is representing sigma a stress amplitude x coordinate is representing sigma m that is the mean stress right so if the point if the combination of sigma a and sigma m is below the line the material is safe it is above the line means material will fail this is safe according to soderberg what you are considering is now soderberg right similarly you can also see for similarly you can also see for the goodman line according to goodman line if the combination of the sigma m and sigma a is below the line it is safe if it is above the line so it is 
it will fail the material will fail right similarly we can talk about the gerber line if it is within the Ger gerber line right the material is safe if it is outside the gerber line the material will fail right so a very important conclusion to make so yahan se objective questions aata hai please all of you objective questions might be asked from this point theek hai let, let us try to see theek hai which is the best of all the lines theek hai the soderberg soderberg line will be considered as conservative sorry not conservative theek hai the gerber line will be con considered as conservative goodman line is the best line Goodman line is the best line, and Soderberg line is the most economical. Am I audible to all of you? Okay. I'll let you let you decide. ठीक है एक बार देखेंगे इस चीज को ठीक है एक बार देखेंगे थोड़ा सा लॉजिकली लगाओ ठीक है लेट एस ट्राई टू डू इट लॉजिकली ठीक है आप ही बताओ टेन मी मोस्ट कंजर्वेटिव एस्टिमेट मोस्ट कंजर्वेटिव लेट एस लेट एस ट्राई टू फाइंड इट वेरी लॉजिकली ठीक है वॉट इज वॉट इज वॉट शुड बी द आंसर नहीं नहीं यू ट्राई टू find out the meaning meaning of conservative first what exactly is conservative what do i mean by conservative theek okay. hai because even i don't remember theek okay, hai i also try to solve each and everything logically theek okay. hai if you are not doing it logically then theek okay, if you are using common sense then things will be easy if you try to remember each and everything no i have not I have not revised this for so many days. Okay, might might be months months altogether. But I still can use my logic to answer this question. I can use my common sense to answer my question. So try to use the common sense. Okay, which of these curves will be most conservative? What do I mean by conservative? If I am saying conservative, if I am saying somebody is conservative, yes, saving. means it is playing safe it is playing safe okay the explanation i am giving you you will be able to remember it always okay if i am saying conservative it, it means playing safe right if i am saying conservative parents what do conservative parents try to do they try to they try to for example if i am saying my parents are conservative i know that a very simple inter caste marriage will not be allowed right me going to parties late night parties will not be allowed me going to going outing with uh, so, so many people will not be allowed because my parents are conservative they are not allowing me so many things why because they are trying to play safe with their child they don't want their child to go out and do all different things and in in the course they might actually suffer right they are just trying to be conservative they are trying to save guard their children right that is the meaning of conservative yes or no right so if i am saying conservative then it means that it is playing safe okay so if you see this soderberg if you see the soderberg equation okay soderberg is what is soderberg is saying if you are going here if you are going here it will fail if you are going here it will fail if you are going here it will fail so it is keeping a very narrow narrow place for safe is keeping a very narrow space for safe so it is not allowing It is saying, no, no, either not going. You cannot design at this point. 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 So you can see, it has a very narrow area for safe design. It has a very narrow area for safe design. So what can I say? The Soderberg is the most conservative.
the Soderberg is the most conservative. Right? In other way, I can say the most safe. What can I say? The conservative means conservative means most safe. Or I can say safest. If the question is being asked, which of the following criteria give you the most safe result? What will be the answer? The most safe answer will be by the Soderbergh criteria because it is assuming all other points. See, see, if you see here, if I'll again tell you, okay, if you if you take this point, let me say, let me say if I take this point. If I take this point, this point, let me say, let me take this point, let me take this point, okay? This point is safe for Goodman, it is safe for Gerber, but it is unsafe for Soderbergh. Can you see this? Can you see point X? Can you see point X? Point X is below the red line, it is safe for Goodman. Point X is below the green line, Gerber line. It means it is safe for Gerber. But the point X, it is above the Soderberg line, blue line. Means Soderberg is saying that no, this point is not safe. Right? So code, code, Soderberg is the most conservative of all the three criteria. Right? The, what is the other other um, name for Soderberg, uh, most conservative? You can say instead of most conservative, most conservative, instead of most conservative, we can also say most safe. The language may be changed. The most safe estimate. So, what is the most safe? The most safe estimate is the Soderberg relationship. Okay. So, tell me now with the logic, tell me. Which is the most unsafe? Which is the most unsafe of all the three criteria? Tell me now. If you use the same logic of all the three criteria, which is the most unsafe? Now you should be able to answer, yeah. Am I audible? You use the same same concept now. I'm just talking about this tree. I'm just talking about this tree. Among this tree, Soderberg is the right. Among this tree, Soderberg is the most safe. Among these three, Soderberg is the most safe. So you can say the on the other end, Gerber line. The Gerber line is a unsafe. How do I remember this? Gerber. Gerber means Gerber hai. Kuch to Gerber hai. You know what is the meaning of Gerber in Hindi? Kuch to Gerber hai. You know what is the meaning? Gerber. Gerber means if you say in Hindi, Gerber. So if you if a person who have a Hindi background, it would have been easy for him to understand. Gerber means kuch to Gerber hai. If you say kuch to Gerber hai, Gerber means there is some problem. If I say is admi me kuch to Gerber hai, this person has some problem. Gerber means problem. In Hindi, Gerber means problem right so you can remember it this way Gerber means problem problem why problem because it is giving me the unsafe criteria because it is giving me the unsafe criteria so which one is the best now tell me of all the three which one is the best it is most unsafe you can say simply say unsafe 
which one is the best in that case no most you see see the best will be between between the most safe and unsafe right i'll tell you why goodman is the most the best why being too very conservative is also not nice okay very being too very conservative is also not nice right being very open is also not nice so it is always the balance in between one that is nice okay which is the best one right with respect to design point of view i'll tell you with respect to design point of view if you want to tell you okay soderberg is the most safe because it is the most conservative so if you want to make it most most safe what will happen the dimensions of the component will increase the dimensions of the component will increase only that way you can actually make it more safe so if the dimensions are increasing if the dimensions are increasing if the dimensions are increasing so what will happen weight will increase will increase cost will increase because more amount of material is now required more amount of material is now required so the cost is also increasing right so that is why it is not the best solution most safe is not the best solution so we have to design keeping in view definitely the safety but also designing includes reduction of weight and reduction of cost right so if it is unsafe unsafe means what is happening the dimensions are less the dimensions are smaller very small so if the dimensions are smaller that is why it is becoming unsafe right so what is the best the best is the one which is balancing both the weight and cost and also the safety so what is the best word best one is the which is which is balancing both that is the weight and cost and the safety you can simply remember it using the term good good man mein good hai good means the best right gerber you can remember term term gerber gerber means problem in hindi gerber means problem problem that is why unsafe so what is the remaining one remaining was the soderberg soderberg is the most safe the remaining one is a soderberg soderberg is a c so you can use this otherwise it becomes very confusing right so for short fast answering you can use this correlation goodman goodman good good is the best gerber gerber means problem problem is unsafe so the remaining is soderberg soderberg is the conservative that is the most safe one right or you can use the logic i have given you here take it you can use the logic that i have given you here to answer this question is it clear to all of you is it clear to all of you theek hai jaldi jaldi try karo all of you try so most of the times we are going to use the goodman relationship okay most of the times we'll do, what you will use is goodman relationship so let us try quick problem let us try quick problem all of you try to do this
you have not find you have not seen you have not attended the last class max and mean are given here okay. internal pressure varying from 4 to 8 mega pascal so what is sigma max here sigma max is equal to 8 mega pascal what is sigma mean here sigma minimum sigma minimum is equal to 4 mega pascal right what kind of stress is this this is alternating stress you can see right from this can you find out what is sigma a that is amplitude and sigma mean that is a mean stress what is sigma a sigma a we have seen this is equal to sigma max maximum stress minus minimum stress divided by 2 and what is the mean stress maximum stress plus minimum stress divided by 2 so give me the value of sigma a and sigma b sorry what is sigma a 8 minus 4 divided by 2 that is 2 What is the mean stress? Mean stress is eight plus four divided by two. That is six. Right. So if you want to see how does the stress is varying, that is also we can find out. So the mean stress is the mean stress is six. Six mega pascal. the mean stress is 6 mega pascal and from the mean stress is going to plus 8 plus 4 plus 8 plus 4 this is how the stress is happening so what is the stress amplitude The stress amplitude we can say it is sigma a is equal to two mega. So which criteria you need to use? You need to use the Goodman, right? Do you remember the Goodman equation? Let us go through the Goodman equation once. देखते हैं Goodman equation कौन सा है? ठीक है? This you have to remember. So better to remember with the with the Curve. If you cannot remember this one, you can remember with the curve. If you can remember the curve, it is easy to remember diagrams, right? So Goodman is sigma m divided by S U T, the middle one, right? S U T sigma a divided by S E sigma a divided by S E. Sigma a Sorry, sigma m divided by S U T plus sigma a divided by S E is equal to one upon factor of safety. So here you can see the so this is a thin pressure vessel right this is a thin pressure vessel okay thoda sa maine i have not read the equation properly okay you have to use little bit of you have to use little bit of strength of materials also okay i am giving you the concept okay uh, if you require if you require i am deleting this first line okay i am deleting this first line for this question because for thin pressure vessel you have to find out the sigma h so sigma h hoop stress right hoop stress and longitudinal stress right hoop stress will be td i don't know you have studied you have studied strength of materials i hope so td by 2t this is td by 4t 
because this is thing spherical spherical so if it is spherical then it will be equal it will be equal right so from the pressure you can find out the stress from the pressure you can find out the stress when the pressure is 4 so you can find out the corresponding stress when the pressure is 8 you can find out the corresponding stress okay for us for simplifying this question right now i am simply i am directly assuming that this is what is the stress okay because we are running sort of time okay if i do it the whole question then it will become very lengthy okay so you can substitute the value of sigma m and sigma a right sut is already given ultimate strength is 800 endurance limit is 400 you can also substitute the value of se and you'll get the value of factor of safety you get the value of factor of safety okay if you want the correct answer what you have to do i've told you again okay if you want the correct answer you have to redo the Can you hear my voice? All of you? Can you hear my voice? Yeah. So if you want to find out the exact answer, you have to read the question. You have to assume the hoop stress. It is spherical. So there is no separate longitudinal and hoop stress. There is only one stress that is hoop stress, right? PD by 40. So corresponding to four megapascal of pressure what will be the hoop stress and corresponding to 8 megapascal of pressure what will be the hoop stress right so you will get the maximum and minimum stress like that it is not 4 and 8 it is the maximum minimum hoop stress you have to find out right from the hoop stress then you can actually find out sigma amplitude amplitude stress amplitude and the mean stress and then you can proceed on with the formula to solve it okay but this Lend equations will not come. Lend equations will not be there. Lend equations will not be there, right? Uh, this questions numericals I have just taken so that you can understand the formula. Yes, what you can be asked is you can be asked the formulas. Okay, you can be asked what is the formulas and the most common objective question from this last part is which one is most conservative, which one is most safe, which one is most uh, unsafe. And which is the best of all the criteria, right? So I hope now you have the overview. Overview is you have the overview how exactly uh, what exactly is this chapter has for you, right? So this is a very long chapter. Generally, uh, around six hours of class is required, right, to properly understand this chapter. So along with solving of proper problems and each and everything. But in the minimum time available, I have tried to give you the maximum information possible, right? So after these, the next class we will do riveted, welded, and threaded joints. Thereafter, we'll do bearings. After completing bearings, we'll go on to gears, clutches, and brakes. This much you have to cover. And we have approximately six hours in our hand. So we'll try to complete each and everything in this time frame. So if you have any doubt, tell me. If you have any doubt, tell me. Can you hear me? Do you have any doubt? Okay, fantastic. Please keep on revising, revising, revising. That is very much required. Please keep on revising, revising, revising. Okay, that is very much required. Yeah, Praveen, tell me what doubt you have.
Yes, Praveen, you can tell me what doubt you have. Now, it will not be C. Engineering service paper is also So anyways, it will be more or less, more or less engineering service paper, but engineering service paper, the overall syllabus will be 30, right? Why? Because uh, the syllabus mentions gate. Okay, the syllabus mentions the syllabus of gate, right? So definitely the syllabus of engineering service is much broader than that of gate, right? So the syllabus you have to pick up, you should know at least what is the syllabus of gate, what are the type of question that has been asked in gate, right? What is not asked in gate, and then you should practice with respect to the engineering service paper. Definitely, the question paper will be from engineering service level, right? Near about engineering service level, right? Uh, less numericals will be there, more conceptual questions. Okay. So, what you can do is what you can do, okay. First of all, remember all the formulas, direct formulas. Don't try to remember all hard, hard formulas, simple, simple formulas. All try to, for example, here you have seen the Gerber formula, uh, the Soderberg and Goodman formula. You have seen the formula for uh, uh, endurance limit, all, all different things, right? So simple, simple formulas you try to remember, right? The concepts. Means what I mean to say that, okay, okay, no problem, no problem, right? So what does the syllabus mention? The syllabus mentions, the syllabus mentions gate syllabus, right? In the HL paper syllabus mentions the gate syllabus, but I have spoken to some of the, some of my friends who are in HL and I've asked them what was the kind of paper when they appeared, right? Uh, sample paper is also available. I feel you should, you, should, you might have uh, found out sample papers by now, right? So uh, the overall overall syllabus is of gate, but the type of questions will be one third that of the gate. That the hardness of the question will be around one third of the gate, right? So in that respect, you can assume that the questions will be more or like the engineering service paper, right? In engineering service paper, what you try to do, try to solve all the basic theoretical questions. Don't try to go for the long, long questions, right? Because, because syllabus for engineering service examination is definitely greater than the gate exam, okay? Don't try to go for each and everything, right? Try to do the simple, simple questions from engineering service paper. The problem is you will not be able to understand unless and until you have gone through the syllabus of gate properly and engineering service properly, you will not be able to understand which is in the syllabus of gate and which is not in the syllabus of gate because there is a, not a clear cut demarcation. It is only on the basis of previous 25, 30 years papers, we are able to predict what are the type of questions that are being asked in gate means what is the syllabus of gate and what are the what is what are the type of questions that are asked in engineering service and means what is the syllabus of engineering service exam right so what i suggest all the important important points which have been dealt in class right with respect to those points whichever questions you can find you solve it from the engineering service paper okay don't try to go for gate okay don't try to solve the questions from gate Gate one mark question definitely you can try. Generally, the one mark question, theoretical questions of gate exam definitely you can try. But otherwise, try to do the yes, PSC questions also you can try. Okay, but uh, PSC questions should be sufficient. Okay, PSC questions should be sufficient, right? But again, uh, see this PSC questions also. Okay, if you try to do the PSC questions, I think that is good enough. Okay. But the PSU questions also, the problem is, PSU questions are, in, uh, I mean, uh, there are few PSUs, right, which recruit uh, their own 
book which conducts their own exams right you can try to find out those psus in their exam but it is generally not very easy to find out the psu papers because nowadays because it has been online for some time right so you have that 880 pages for simplicity what you do okay abhi time kam hai you cannot complete each and everything from engineering service the best thing for you will be to practice those 880 questions psu uh, 880 pages 8000 questions psu question bank you have received you have received you have to pdf format yes you should have it actually praveen you should have it if you don't you can you can you can you can actually uh, uh, you can actually get it you can ask in the group okay uh, somebody can share it okay uh, so there it has been shared 880 pages 8000 questions from psu that has been that has been shared so you can go through that you can go through that okay and clear all your concepts as many concepts as you can okay and i think and the formulas that has been shared in class that has been taught in class okay if you're trying to do too much you'll end up doing nothing okay you'll still try to do too much you'll end up doing nothing so basic thing is that if you have gone through all the classes just keep on revising because whatever we are teaching you is condensed form already condensed form like in a very short form we are trying to provide you the maximum information so revise the class whatever is taught in class all the formulas that has been taught in class okay and apart from that try to solve as many questions from that 8000 question bank okay 8000 question bank okay so you ask in the group to provide you the psu uh, booklet somebody will share it okay if you are not getting it then you can ask me if you are not getting it that you can ask me i hope it is clear anything else guna vel murgan i hope you are doing good so how is your how is your preparation going on you there good good so keep on practicing okay keep on practicing i know in very short time we're getting a uh, lot of information or whatever you can try to analyze try to fit into your mind and try to practice more and more questions okay so if you have uh, there is one saying okay there is a one saying okay uh, that when you work hard the more you work hard the luckier you get the more you work hard the luckier you get right so keep on working hard you might get luckier right and you might get lucky definitely lucky in the sense there are so many people who will be uh, attempting this exam so many few seats right so work hard you might get lucky and you might feel you might get most of the questions from whatever you have studied right in that case definitely it will be very easy for you yes if you can if you can definitely go for the engineering service objective question bank but it will be i don't know if you have good concepts definitely you can do it if you have time definitely you can do it but what i will prefer in this short time to revise 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 instead of running after questions because in a day you will be able to act max at max how many questions you will be able to solve it even from the engineering service at max 100 questions not more than that okay wo bhi bahut zyada dikkat hoga theek hai because you if your concepts are not clear right but if you keep on revising the notes again and again and again see whatever whatever you discuss in the first three class there can be 1000 questions from there right if you try to form there can be thousand different questions right so if you keep on revising whatever in taught in class okay because you are lacking time no doubt practicing of questions is very important very 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 important okay no doubt but right now 
I am not very sure that if you have enough time left, that you practice questions from all different subjects. Okay. So stick to one, stick to PSU questions. What this is what I will suggest. Stick to the PSU questions available, right? See all the one-liner and sort objective numerical questions, and along with that, put up, put more focus on revising the subjects, the notes, revising the concepts. Okay, because in today's class it is it was of two hours, but I guarantee there can be more than fifteen to twenty questions or even unique questions that can be formed. Now, if you alter them questions, it can go more than hundred. Right. So that is the power of this short, you can say, sessions, okay, crash course sessions. You get maximum benefit if you, if you revise it. Okay. Yes, exactly. To sum up, prior to list is a notes revision, then PSU questions, and if time allows, then you can go for some of the PAC previous equations, conceptual shortcuts. Exactly, exactly. You're bang on point. Is this your first class, Naveen? When did you join? I've not seen you earlier. Okay, okay, fine. Fine. So I hope that you uh, revise your previous classes. Okay. And okay, we'll make up. We have another two to three classes for machine design. Then we'll have theory machines also. Okay. No issue, Praveen. Okay. No issue. Take care of your health. Just make sure that next two weeks, two to three weeks, you maintain your health. You maintain good health so that you can learn the maximum and you can give your best in your exam. Okay, then I'll close the meeting in that case. Thank you. Good night, all of you. Good night. Thank you, all of you. Good night.